It's Majestic Matt! He's back on the mic with his kill the shot! <laughs> That'd be me, the biggest faggot in the known galaxy, I guess. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, guess who's Welcome to the People's Populous Press Show for August 10th, 2020. Today we're having some fucking fun. We're, we're having a look over what's happened this weekend. If I was to sum up the current situation with Ethan Ralph with just one simple parable or metaphor or simile or whatever the fuck you want to call it, I, I would liken this to if you've ever watched UFC or mixed martial arts in your life before. And you've seen the moment when a fighter gets fucking rocked and the blows fucking come in and he's fucking staggered and he's like staggering back and the other fighter comes in and boom, boom, two, three, four more blows right to the fucking chin like undefended. Buddy's fallen to his back. The other fighter gets on top. He's just fucking pounding him, just feeding him shots underneath. Buddy turtles to his fucking to his back or to to the to his stomach. He's turtling, he's turtling, you know. Oh fuck! And he just keeps getting pounded. But in this particular situation, he goes unconscious, and the referee just doesn't give a shit. You know, he's like, "No, I want to see blood. I want to see someone die." And so the other fighter just just continues to just fucking pound the motherfucker to death. The referee in this instance is Janitor Jim, who refuses to clean up his fucking mess. <laughs> the referee is like, no, no, I need to see more. I need to see this man completely broken and dead. Like, Janitor Jim needs to see a suicide with brains splattered on the fucking wall before he stops the fight. <laughs> That's what's happened. That's basically what's happening here. The guy is just taking so much damage. So many shots from so many different directions. He's just getting blown the fuck out endlessly. Endlessly. Even this MC Jarbo song I'm playing at the beginning of the show, which is supposed to be their biggest victory ever there. Oh, MC Jarbo is back to fucking own mundane Madden PPP. It, it makes Matt actually look fucking cool, like he's <laughs> like he's Eminem in the kill shot video. It shits on Ethan and it shits on Dame in the verses. So good job there, guys, alienating MC Jarbo. Congratulations there. Big win there with the MC Jarbo song talking about how you diddle kids, Ethan, and Dame blocks people. 
big win for the gun guard there. Big win, such a big win. I play it at the start of my show, and let's just play a little more. Like, how is this supposed to make Jarbo look bad, actually? Ethan Ralph wants to fuck little kids. He does want to fuck little kids. He's a sick man. So let's start off where everybody wants me to start off. Oh, you cover this right away yesterday. Oh, PPP, we need you to cover this. Oh, sir, you can't do your X-Files reviews. Look, here's the fucking truth, faggots. I do what I want when I want to do it, and I'm not even going to cover it today. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to cover it today. Instead, we're going to listen to Brazil. Look at this amazing dance moves here, guys. I know you want me to cover the aid leaks, but instead I'm gonna do really fat obese dance moves there. To Brazil. And this is gonna be the whole show there, guys. Terrible fucking shows I've been doing lately there, guys. So this is what we're gonna do instead. This is what people want there. <laughs> All right, I was fucking with you. We're actually going to cover the aid leaks now. <laughs> You've seen Alex Jones for years tell you fluoride and tell you about Jeffrey Epstein and tell you about the New World Order and fish infusion and artificial black holes and strangeless and superconducting super colliders and other systems like cyclotrons. But you've ignored that because it's just all background. But now that I have llamas, now that I have the secret weapon, this is amazing. Here you go, my sweetie. Uh, Poco, which, which, which one's the really... Poco's the big one. Poco seems like... Can we get a close-up of Poco's face for TV viewers? Poco looks like it's kind of in master control over here. Is this just Poco? Poco, how you doing? Come on here, sweetie. Can I give you a cookie? Can I give you a cookie? Oh, come on. You want one of these. There's no fluoride in this. Because they don't want to brain damage you, so the government didn't put that in there. Come on, you want, want this? You, you, you don't trust? Have a, oh, a cookie. Why do you think they're tripling and quadrupling down on hoaxes? What do you think their end game is? Because it's only discrediting them more, but they keep doing it. I mean, let's, I mean if we're going to go full public, full transparency, let's see all of it. Because I guarantee you what the Democrats were doing was criminal, Im impeachable activities routinely. Hey, where do the llamas like to be petted? On the neck. Okay, you're good. Oh, <laughs> I got a friend now. Hey, you give your llamas fluoride? Hell no, we don't give them fluoride. Be I mean, that's something that really sinks in for people. Sweden undergoing demographic experiment of historical dimensions. This is, uh, do they have psychic powers or something? Or this is just an amazing moment. You know, I don't mind the llama in the background. That did calm them to see the great master llama. Engineered the way the human. All right there, guys. It's time. Now, if you haven't seen these yet, I mean, uh, you must be living under a fucking rock. But Aid was Ralph's ex-girlfriend. Who knows how real this really was? She says it was real. I don't know. I, I'm down to interview Aid if she wants. I was very respectful with T-Clips, but... She seems to want to piecemeal out what she has, right? She doesn't want to give it all away at once. Uh, oh, beautiful. Because this is her time in the sun, it's her chance to shine, so she's going to piecemeal it out one little bit at a time to the fucking Kiwis and keep getting attention and dopamine hits instead of doing the, the, the interview with me, which is going to give her the biggest dopamine hit possible. But then there's not going to be... 
results after. Look, I just say, the reality is, age, you've gone this far, you may as well dump everything. Who am I to say anything, but I'll treat you very respectfully like we did with T-Clips. It is what it is. <clears throat> so let's have a look here. <sighs> okay. Here we are. You told me you weren't really into threesomes, didn't you? Well, yeah, I mean, you both kind of took it to that level. The pedophile thing. And why do you ask about threesomes, LOL? So here he is. He's, like, discussing with his ex, like, Kiwi Farms posts from Josh. And accusing Josh of being a pedophile. And, and she goes, well, why do you ask about threesomes? I oh, know I was just asking. No, you weren't. <laughs> And yeah, I guess I was pretty harsh with my rhetoric, LOL. No shit, eh? Faggot, you know, you're calling people pedophiles. Uh, you're, uh, why should you be surprised when other people call you that? Considering you were on stream looking at it with Andy Worski. Considering that you masturbated to footage of Soph. Considering that you brought Soph onto the kill stream at all. Considering that you groomed Nora from the time she was... <laughs> Not even 18 years old, and the same thing with this Faith girl, you know? You wonder why people would call you a pedophile, you know? And then you bring the same bullshit rhetoric around. She's asking why. He goes, why not? LOL, okay. <laughs> I know, I've never had one, so I'm always, like, curious. Oh, no, no, no! Ralph never had threesome! He's virgin loser! <laughs> He's dummy! Yeah, yeah, yeah! You know, Gator and other faggots would say that they've had threesomes. They're just full of shit or whatever. You know, but Ralph, if you asked him on the air, he'd be like, Yeah, I've had a threesome. I've had so many threesomes. Just like my dad, Dick Masterson. Very sad. Very sad. Uh, what I find funny about this, <coughs> every single one of these, like, pickup artist guys... Who's claimed they've read the game, who claims they understand women and all this shit. They represent themselves as that to their audience. They have fuck all game. Zero fucking game. I'm not sitting up here preaching to you guys that I pick up women every fucking day, even though I do, of course. But, you know, just get fucking real. You know, the reality is it is what it is. But these fucking guys, these fat fuckers like Gator and Ralph, they pretend like. They're kings who pick up these Puerto Rican women, you know, Gator. You make up these fake stories to Dick Masterson to try and impress him instead of just admitting the fact that you're a virgin or you've had less than five sexual partners. There's actually nothing fucking wrong with that. Zero wrong with that. As long as you have, like, a set of morals and principles for why you live that way, and you're living up to them. And even if you don't, it's still not a bad thing because you're not engaging in sinful behavior. Maybe I'm just crazy. I mean, this was supposed to be the norm, and it was the norm in society for a long time. But now, if you haven't had a threesome, you're a loser. All this fucking shit. So, uh, we've all had a million threesomes. It's just sad, the posturing from these fucking guys. And as soon as their DMs get revealed, they have zero game. Zero game, zero ability to do anything. They're just a bunch of fucking jokers. It just gets even sadder. You know, why not? LOL, okay. Just fucking shoots him down. <laughs> I know. I've never had one. So I'm always, like, curious. I think that's normal. Oh. First of all, I don't think it's normal. Now call me traditional or old-fashioned. I don't think threesomes are normal or natural. I think that they're sinful. I think that God wouldn't will you to do that. He wouldn't want you to do that. I think that <clears throat> one of those women is not going to be your partner. You know, and you're damaging her ability to pair bond with other females. It's been proven. 
all these guys like to talk about like traditional values, family values, how they really care about reestablishing a patriarchy or reestablishing, uh, you know, what what should be Christian values in society. But the reality is, they see nothing wrong with sexual degeneracy, threesomes, homosexuality, female domination, all sorts of weird shit. They see nothing wrong with any of this stuff. It is what it is. I, I would expect this sort of talk from Destiny or Vouch or the liberal degenerate crowd. You don't really expect the wholesome, traditional values crowd. And people say, well, Ralph never, never purported to be that. Give me a fucking break. When you're a Republican and you're spitting the conservative talking points every fucking day, you know that 25% of the base are evangelicals. At least 25% of the base are evangelical Christians. So who do you think you're selling to? We're not fucking stupid, Ethan. We're not stupid. You know? And shit like this shows the, the guys who are worldly in your audience and care about money and women and status that you're not the way to get there. And it shows the Christians in your audience and the white nationalists in your audience and the people who are politically serious in your audience that you're a fucking joker as well. It shows all of that. But here's what's fucked up about this whole thing as well. He's in the relationship with faith. So he's in the... Think about this. He's in the relationship with Nora. He starts fucking around with faith. With aid, with other women. Nora divorces him. Then he's with aid. He starts fucking around with faith again. Aid dumps him. Then he's with faith. Then he starts fucking around with aid again. Now faced with her parents. And lo and behold... The Instagram post that was supposed to come today, the epic ownage of Jan uh, of sorry, generous Josh, never came. Where is the Instagram post confirming she's still in Gunsville, Virginia, licking your crease? Or did her father convince her that you were fucked and she saw this shit and she's not coming back? <clears throat> Look at this. Yeah, that's kind of my philosophy most days. Having two women come on my cock back to back is sort of an appealing thought, is all I'm saying. Lol, I'm banned for Spotify, angling for threesomes when I should be working. Ha ha ha, the absolute state of myself. <clears throat> There's like one minute. <clears throat> There's like one minute between these messages where he's like saying like, Having two women come on my cock is appealing. He reads it, realizes, oh my god, what I typed is cringy and fucking lame. And he just abandons the attempt. <clears throat> he gains some some measure of shame. He realizes, fuck, like I, I'm flirting with another woman when I'm in a relationship. This is fucked up. I'm angling for threesomes. When my career is fucked, I've been banned from the biggest podcasting platform on earth and I'm sitting here trying to make threesomes happen to be like my daddy Dax Herrera but I'm just a fucking joke and a loser and a bum and a crackhead a uh, pill popping alcoholic degenerate with hanging rotting grizzled flesh curtains you know that drape down over my penis making it impossible for me to fuck where faith has to carry that gun where Geyer has to carry that gun every fucking day. It's just sad. It's just sad. You know, the pattern of behavior, the cheating, the lying, the swindling, the degeneracy, and the idea and thinking that it's all normal and this is how everybody else acts. Because Dick Masterson told you this. Have you ever considered that Dick just thinks it's really, really funny to give you bad advice? Have you considered that? That Daddy Dax thinks it's really funny to watch you try and be him, but you never can be him? Because A, you don't even have his level of charisma, which as I exposed isn't even that high, because he's gone soft and he doesn't have the eye of the tiger, you know. Uh, B, you're, you're a fat fuck, at least he's somewhat in shape. C, he actually has money and isn't in fucking tons of debt. 
and, and, and D, he actually has uh, social skills to be able to speak to women and finagle them into weird threesome situations. And even still, he fucking failed to get Jamie Lynn and an 80s girl into this fucking threesome with all the advantages he had. So why did you think that you would be able to make this happen? And then you could go talk to Daddy Dax about how cool you were or dunk on the Kiwi Farms about your threesome with the 34-year-old alien aid and the fucking... 18 year old high schooler there who's fat with meth teeth as though it was going to be some epic win that was going to shut me up and shut up the haters it's just delusional it's just delusional and there's more of this <clears throat> there's tons more of this that AIDS got that Nora's got that Faith's got and it's just going to keep coming. And it's just going to keep getting worse for you, Ethan. If I was you, man, I would just... I don't know, man. I, fight to the end. Fight to the end. Don't give up. But you probably should. You probably should just fly the white flag and just say, Fuck it. I'm going to go work at Walmart. You would make more money anyway, man. Let's face it. A lot of these nights you're making $30, 40 30 40 dollars in lemons there's no way to live man your your organic audience is, is less than mine you have like two three hundred people who watch your show it's time to move on it's gone to the point where your chat is like donga tier the only people who are in the chat are all mods and they just spam stickers it's actually worse than donga's chat because at least donga tribe use words Donga Tribe don't use picture drawing. Donga Tribe on YouTube. Biggest platform in world. Donga Tribe too good for Lemon Farm Emperor. What a disaster. What a fucking disaster. -y. It's just sad. It's just sad. But it's, it's also very, very funny. It's very, very funny. You know, he thinks, oh, I'm going to have two women come on my cock back to back. Buddy, we've all seen your penis. It's small. No women are coming from this. No women are satisfied by your animalistic aggression. When, again, I've seen you try and get up off couches. You struggle. You struggle to get up. I've had moments where I'm drunk too. I struggle to get off the couch. The weasel loves to show that. But, I mean, the reality is, man, like, I'm not claiming I'm the most virile fucking animal in the world. I can toss a bitch around, but at the same time, I'm not claiming I'm the studliest man who ever lived and telling my audience I'm a pickup artist, Chad, who's, you know, able to get these threesomes and shit and, you know, do smasher pass games and all this ma masculine stuff. Well, I have a girlfriend or a wife. It's just sad. Very fucking sad, dude. He's living in, like, this emotional maturity of a 16-year-old boy. Which, again, is where Dax Herrera is emotionally arrested. Even though he's approaching 40, 50 years old. It's time to grow up. It's time to put pull your shit together. No. You know, he's not going to. Because they're stuck in this emotional mindset of... All that matters is bitches, pussy, drugs and money last and a lot of these fucking guys don't take care of their money don't save their money they blow it all on drugs and partying and drinking and then at the end of the day they're 50 years old they're a broke loser i've seen it I, I, my dad has a friend who had a massive inheritance multi-million dollar from his family then two years later won the lottery at age 25 he was a multi-multi-millionaire, won the lottery, and had inheritance. Blew it all on wine, women, and song, cocaine, hookers, gambling, all this shit. And now he lives on my dad's couch, okay? He's 50 years old. He doesn't even know his son. It's sad. It's sad. I've told the story of Uncle Al before. That's probably what's going to end up happening to Dick Masterson if he's not careful. But he's been more careful with his money than most of these guys. 
Ethan Ralph is going to end up that same way, either living on his friend's couches or living on the street or just flat out dead from his drug or alcohol abuse. People who think he's going to die this year or next year, they're wrong. Abuse takes a longer time to kill people. Alcohol abuse, you know, even eating so much food, people think, oh, Chantal the foodie, foodie beauty and all these fat fucks will die tomorrow. It's not true. They'll die 10 years, 15 years down the line, five years down the line, but people think these guys will die. No, but at the end of the day, on a long enough fucking basis, these people are going to live miserable, wretched lives. And Ethan Ralph will live a miserable, wretched life. <clears throat> That's if he doesn't kill himself. I honestly think he does think about suicide a lot. I think he does think about suicide a lot, but... At the end of the day, he has such an ego to him and, and too much pride, I think, to end it, him, it all himself. And he's also a coward, so I just don't see it happening. But I think he does think about that a lot. So he's just getting fucking pummeled uh, six ways to Sunday from every which fucking direction. You know, I'm hammering him. Josh is just fucking dunking on him. Jarbo's dunking on him. Kraut's dunking on him. Godwinson was dunking on him. His exes are shitting all over him. He's getting banned from every fucking platform. His viewership numbers are losing to restreams of his own content. His viewership numbers are losing to my shows. His engagement's in the fucking toilet. Tonight he's got his epic fucking show. Guys, oh, it's the epic fucking show. It's Boogie2988, guys. With Frank Castle. What are we going to learn from this? Probably nothing. Like, nothing funny is going to happen. Do you want to know why? Because Ralph's going to tell Frank to be on his best behavior and not to piss off Boogie or say anything to offend. Why? Because he wants Boogie back on. This is the biggest problem with... You book these high-profile guests and you make your show your livelihood. Problem is you can't press those guests or roast those guests or make fun of those guests. Why? Because you want them back on, especially when you're struggling for relevance, you're a failing and dying show, and this is the problem, when you're a failing and dying show because you went too easy on the guests, and you're in this death spiral, you're gonna keep going easy on guests like Boogie, and you're gonna keep being in the death spiral. And again, even if they do torch Boogie tonight, and Frank says fuck you, and goes in on Boogie, is it really going to be that great? What new can we really hear? Like, people have done this before. They've got Boogie on and shit on him and confronted him with his lies and all this shit. And all he ever does is just give the same bullshit political answers. Then we have Jay Dyer. Oh, wow. What a spectacular, flaming hot guest, Jay Dyer. Very boring theological guest. I'm sure we're going to discuss the nature of morality and God and the universe with Gator and Ralph. It will be a really intellectually stimulating discussion there. It's just a joke. I mean, I think I like Frank Castle. I like a lot of the, the pranks that he does. Shit like this, I find his videos funny. Uh, and, I, and I would love to have him on my show. Actually, I think we would get along great. I'd love to send him and Surfer out with GoPros taped to their heads. How about that for an idea? That would be entertainment. But so far as all this fucking bullshit, like, it's the greatest show ever, guys, it's happening right now. You can decide for yourselves whether it's a good show. If it is, I'll say it is. Like with the Tazari Ock and Halsey show, I said yes, good show. But it's not going to be a good show, guys, and it's not... The resurgence of the kill stream. It's back. It's the last dying fucking death rattle of the kill stream. It's sad. They try and hype this shit up, but we know that nothing's going to happen because it's a safe, sanitized, hug box environment for guests because they need to come on. But I repeat myself too many times. <clears throat> Moving on to the, the fucking sadness of Gator's Twitter. I mean... <laughs> This is one of the saddest fucking things. One of these days, I'm going to stretch 
and accidentally punch my portable AC off the table. Look at my air conditioner. It's an LG model. It's a very nice air conditioner. I think it's like 8,000 BCU or something. Okay? It keeps it fairly cold, nice in here so I'm not sweating like a pig. You can hear it, you know, interfering with the audio, making people with headphones cry out their bums. But, um, look, I can't even imagine being so poor. So poor and so desperate that you would purchase basically a glorified fan. Like, the Arctic Air and these shitty $10, $20 made for tv products that you're going to put on your desk and the reality of these products is a lot of them actually make it hotter in the room they make it warmer in the room because they give off heat from like the battery running and then they fucking blow the heat at you because they're just a scam and they're ten dollars and they're a shitty fucking product you may as well have just bought a fan you could have bought like a good forty dollar box fan Instead of wasting 10 or $20 on just a cheap hunk of crap, like the Arctic Air, which if you just go through the reviews of these portable air conditioners, they're just a scam. But just imagine the smell. Imagine the smell in Shannon's fucking dorm room. You know, this 400-pound greasy fucking anime fan who remembers anime girls' birthdays, who looks up to and serves Ethan Ralph, who eats off paper plates. You know, as Shannon fucking eats off his paper plates in his dorm room or eats his ramen out of styrofoam bowls, paying his $300 rent, you know, on his sweet fucking $300, $500 gaming rig that can only play Minecraft and, like, some fucking shitty Japanese anime waifu games. Guys, I'm an old fag. I'm a king. I live in a fucking $300 dorm room with my fucking portable air conditioner. <sighs> Everyone's jealous of you, I guess. You have a little shitty portable air conditioner that you keep on your desk. You just are fucking sweating so bad in summer, just stinking. Fucking wretched. Just like Pinecone said, she wouldn't kiss you because you stunk. Like a bum. Like a homeless man. Like a fucking fish trawler that had been out on the fucking ocean. You know, unable to shower for three months trying to catch crabs. That's what you smell like, Shannon. And you get up on your high horse and you try and gunt guard and you try and say that you're better than us or that the A-logs are jealous that you're the co-host on a dying program. Hosting dying YouTubers like Boogie2988 and boring fucking losers like, like Jay Dyer. Do you know what is dire? Your situation is dire, man. You still aren't getting paid. You, you make no money from this game. There's zero financial compensation. I think you make like $12 a month on Patreon, man. Look, with my tasteful PayPal button, dude... I make more than that. And I don't solicit donations or ask for anything. The odd time somebody will come around and kick me 50 bucks or 20 bucks. Um, because they feel like they should compensate me for what I've done or whatever the fuck. I really don't think that I deserve it. People asked. They wanted it. I gave it to them, a tasteful PayPal button. And I make more than you gave it. I draw more viewers than you on live streams, Gator. I, 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 by any metric, I'm more successful than you online. I, I have a real job. I, I have an education. Uh, Gator, like you're a nothing. You're a nobody. You're the sidekick to Aquaman. Dude, like, please listen to reason. Stop what you're doing. Think about what you're doing to yourself. You're wasting your life, man. How many hours a week are you wasting? This is time you will never get back. You're not somebody that's hyper-talented or, you know, super intelligent or creative or 
where you're going to be able to make up for the, the time that you've wasted on this later in life. You're the sort of low IQ like Untermensch that needs to be working really hard and doing all the right things. You can't be wasting your time and slacking off like this or you're going to end up with nothing. And I'm just telling you that, man. You don't have the genetics necessary to take, to take on the massive time sink that you are. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you, man. And if you just be honest with yourself and you look around your conditions and you realize you're living in a $300 dorm room with 500, five other guys in the dorm room and you, ha you all have to share one shower, so you basically never shower because you, you don't want to deal with the confrontation of the five other guys in the house yelling at you to get out of the shower, so you never shower and you're fucking sweating and just stinking and you don't wash your clothes because you're too lazy to do laundry. Look around your conditions, man. Look at your life. Compare it to literally any of the A-logs, even the weasel, and kill yourself. That's what I would suggest. Either that or fucking smarten up. Stop wasting 20 to 25 hours a week polishing Ethan Ralph's balls with your mouth, licking his boots and sucking the gunt grease from his crease, and actually go to school you know, become the x-ray technician you wanted to be or whatever and, and, and go get a real job and, and figure it out. That's what I suggest, man. Stop pretending you're a chad or a pickup artist or some king. You're not. You're trash. You're a loser, man. It's very sad. These people's lives are very sad. It gets even sadder, though. Okay? Like, as sad as Ralph, like, cheating on fucking aid and, and all this fucking or cheating on faith with aid cheating on Nora with faith or aid or whoever the fuck it was that week as sad as his like serial fucking cheating and scumbag behavior and sexual degeneracy and gators beta -ness is what's even sadder is these fucking rand and dingo they live in this alternate universe okay where Rand just constantly accuses me and Surfer of being feds. Do you really think Surfer's a fed? Have you listened to him? Have you listened to me? I mean, if you think what we're feds, and it's credible to call Surfer or myself a fed, then everybody's a fed, you fucking idiot. And Rand even admits to working for the government. But again, he just lives in this fucking delusional conspiracy theory world where anybody that opposes him at all has to be a federal agent or a Jew. It's a fantasy world. It's a fantasy world that he's created to make himself think that he's smarter than the average person. I, I know. I'm somewhat trepidatious. I, know, I, I live in a... I'm so much smarter than the stupid sheeple out in the street. I know that everybody is a Jew and a fed. And they run the world, the Jews and the feds. And anybody who disagrees with me is a Jew and a fed. I'm a king. I'm special. No, you're not special. You work a fucking middle income government job because why, Rand? Because you're not good enough to make it in the private sector. You have to have your low IQ be subsidized by the government. That's the reality about you, buddy. Government workers are fucking parasites on the system. They don't create anything of value. You're a useless fucking bureaucrat. And you're the Fed. This fucking bullshit. Like, you're a Fed. You're a Jew. And all you can really say to it is it's fucking retarded. Because you go, oh, I'm, I'm not a Fed. Why would he deny being a Fed if he's, not a, if he's really a Fed? Oh, this confirms the Jewish conspiracy. Oh, every single thing in my life is the work of the Jew. Oh, you know, and, and the politics we espouse on this program. Murdoch Murdoch endorsed the show. So are Murdoch Murdoch feds? I guess according to this guy, they're feds. Even if you advocate for white people and the existence of white people and white children or whatever, to this guy, if you don't lick Ethan, lick Ethan Ralph's feet and kiss his ass, you're a fed and a Jew. 
And so he's been constantly tweeting this shit out over the last number of weeks. Now today he just goes full retard. Your boy got busted boosting his views with bots, Ray Mears. Some advice for free next time you try and flex on someone with malicious intent. Make merely all sure you're spitting facts. It would be embarrassing to be made to look foolish. So here I am. The focus is fucked. 1.4 thousand views. Only 126 lemons. To Ralph's uh, 842 with 3,500 lemons. What Rand is trying to say is that because I don't have lemons, um, that my viewership is fake. This is his entire claim, his whole proof there. He might have a point if I was a grifting degenerate loser, but I don't ask for donations. I specifically tell people not to donate. So that explains it there, you fucking dipshit. Way to go ahead and show that I double Ethan's viewers. I doubled his viewers there. Way to show everybody that. Then you have this fucking loser come in because I say, I say like, Rand, you have zero evidence of these sad claims. The reality is DLive is a joke and you couldn't even stay on it because you're foolish. Oh, here's the evidence. So if you can see here, you can't really see it. He's talking about the Gunt Retort stream. DLive must have turned up the bots, open more Gunt Retort tabs. So the guys on Kiwi Farms were saying, and I didn't test it myself, that if you open a new tab on DLive, it counts it not only as one new viewer, but three new viewers. This is a problem on DLive's end, and it's why none of the viewing figures are accurate. Yeah, I'll admit that my viewing figures on DLive aren't accurate. It's not because I'm using bots or anything like that. It's because DLive itself bots everybody's numbers to make you want to go to DLive thinking you're getting a bigger audience, but in reality, your actual viewing numbers are probably about a third of what they are on DLive. So when Ralph's numbers are like eight, 900, it's two, 300. When my numbers are 14, 1500, it's four, 500. And as I've gone back to YouTube, that's what I've seen. I've seen numbers uh, for my live streams, 400, 500, 300 thereabouts and those numbers on DLive would be 1200, 1400, 1500. There's something fishy about DLive's numbers in general and this guy trying to show evidence of the gun retort being botted by people opening tabs, that doesn't show that they were doing it for my stream, which they weren't by the way. That stream with the 1.4 thousand was like a week prior to this. The guy's just a fucking idiot. Just very sad. People come in and just refute him. And then they, 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 they basically just drop the truth. When you look at Ralph's chat, it's dead. All it is is sticker spam from the same 12 fucking wrenched accounts. Okay? When you look at my chat, it's all real people having conversations, speaking in full sentences not just gibberish and stickers. So that's how you can really tell that my audience is organic, it's not botted, and his audience is fucking totally artificial, totally botted, and totally fake. And it only exists as either a front for money laundering or child pornography. Who knows, who knows which. Now people might say, oh, it's crazy for you to say it's a front for money laundering or fucking child pornography. This guy here is accusing me of being a Jew or a fed every day. And it's just sad. It's very sad. And, and you have the same fucking idiot. Look at this dingo here now. Dingo goes on my, my Facebook and digs up pictures from 10 years ago. So he's dug up this picture from 10 years ago. So if you look at it, you think, whoa, holy shit, PPP lost a lot of weight. He looks pretty good here. Oh, look, there's like the slightest little bit of gut that's hanging out there of his shirt, which is like a <laughs> way smaller shirt than Ralph wears. He's six foot four. He's looking pretty slim here, you know, and, and, and the gut that's hanging out isn't like grizzled flesh like, like Ethan Ralph's. Then it's like, oh, my God, look at this picture of him from 10 years ago when he was 14 years old. Oh, wow, he's way thinner than he is now and like... They're saying, look at his cross-eyed tits. Like, 
Wow, congratulations. Like, they, they look pretty normal to me there, buddy. It's because of the perspective there that they might look a little off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what a weirdo. He's going on my Facebook to try and, like, prove some sort of point there. Just so fucking sad. Again, like, we got the Murdoch Murdoch endorsement. I don't know what more you want. It's just sad. You're a leftist. You're a Jew. You're a Fed. No, I, I'm not actually any of those things. I think it's funny, though, that you get so rattled and think I am a Fed. I mean, if I am, I, I'm very successful, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm whooping your fucking idiotic asses. You fucking guys talk about a, a big game about how you're going to save the white race. Look at this. You can't even save yourselves. You have zero viewership. Rand gets fuck all for views. Fuck all for money. Same with this dingo guy. I, I, I crush their metrics. They want to talk about how much they're doing for the white race or the white man. They're not doing anything but making white advocates look fucking retarded. By constantly screaming about how there's a Jew and a Fed behind every fucking bush. It's not to say that there's no such thing as Jews or Feds. Obviously there are. But to try and say that fucking PPP and Surfer are feds. Are you fucking daft, son? That's all I've got to say, really. Like, these guys live in like a delusional world where it's just everybody is a Jew, everybody is a fed if they don't agree with them. Now, if I said Ethan Ralph was great, but like, you're a mensch. You're a king. It doesn't matter what I have to say about white people or advocating for Western civilization or advocating for Christian values or family values or the traditional family or advocating against homosexuality or against abortion. They don't care about any of that. All they care about is, do you lick the feet of my men, Sheath and Ralph, who's going to give me a, a boost in my career so I can try and make more money from Super Chats? That's all these guys care about. And so far as like the dingo is concerned, if you're so concerned with securing the future of the white race, what I want you to understand is you have children. Take care of your children. You come at me and you say, I'm trying to like put your children in the poorhouse or in the street or whatever. And you try and guilt trip me and cry, you know, in, in my private DMs. The reality of it is you did it to yourself. The first responsibility that you have is not to the preservation of the broader white race. The first responsibility you have is to yourself and to your children and to your wife. That's the responsibility you have. You shouldn't be fucking around making these stupid videos that have zero impact on the real world. That are causing Antifa and fucking nutcases like me to come after you. You shouldn't be doing this. Do you know why? Because it's going to cost you your job. It's going to cost your children the roof over their heads. Just stop doing what you're doing. What a Jew, what a fed. He's telling me to stop. There are other people who are already doing it. TRS already exists. Enoch and Stryker exist. Strike and Mike exist, right? Richard Spencer exists still, doesn't he? David Duke exists still, doesn't he? Oh, they're all feds. They're all Jews. Okay, well... You're the only amazing uncocked voice. There's tons of guys on BitChute who have comparable reaches to you. Or on Library who have comparable reaches to you. Which is fuck all. It's like zero. So why don't you stop playing the savior and leader of the white race. And go get a fucking job. Take care of your family. Take care of, of, of the people around you. Protect them. Arm yourself. Arm your family. Prepare if you think there's going to be a race war. Prepare if you think there's going to be the end of the world. But don't sit here and try and be the leader of the white race and then wonder when stones and arrows come your way and you bitch and cry about it. That's all I've got to say. That's, all, that's it. It's just sad, these fucking capos. And they think that Ethan's going to save the white race. They really do. The guy who jerks off to interracial cuckold porn. Let me show you. So after Faith went home... You know, the savior of the white race, Ethan Ralph, purchased this. There it is. There's his new girlfriend, yeah? 
The Super Sonico has arrived. Wow, it's Super Sonico. It's Ethan Ralph's new girlfriend. He's going to fucking rub his little pecker till it creams to this shit. That's your savior of the white race, Dingo. That's your savior of the white race, Rand. Are you fucking joking? Are you fucking... Are you niggas serious? Are you faggot serious? Stop it. Stop it. Ski up. Stop it, Dingo. Stop it, Rand. It's over. It's over. Now, this is an abrupt transition to something completely unrelated to Ethan Ralph, but I need to get this off my chest because it's really fucking bothering me since I watched watched it last night. For those of you who are unaware, there was a Discovery Channel for Shark Week. A lot of you know what Shark Week is. They, you know, for the, all the stoned fucking losers on their couch who just sit around all day and smoke weed. They put on Shark Week so they can look at the pretty sharks under the water moving during Shark Week. Anyway, it was Mike Tyson was supposed to fight a great white shark. That's right. Mike Tyson was going to fight a fucking shark. They build it as Mike Tyson versus Jaws. And I go, I got to see that. Now, I knew I was probably going to be disappointed. I knew that it was probably just going to be bullshit. And Mike Tyson probably wasn't going to fight the shark. But by God, they promised me that Mike fucking Tyson was going to put on a pair of boxing gloves and a scuba tank dive underwater and fight a fucking great white shark to the death and he might die. In the advertisements they talked about how he might die, he might, the shark might fucking bite his arms and legs off. So, I had high hopes for this. Dana White introduces the special, you know, it's like, oh shit, the baddest man on the planet versus the shark. And they start doing the training and like Tyson's underwater in a pool with mechanical sharks learning like the technique to disable the shark and how to deal with them and how to try and control the shark and how it has like these pressure points on its body and shit and you're like oh you know Tyson's struggling like it's exhausting him he's 54 years old to be underwater black people can't swim so good anyway you know and, and you're like oh fuck this is gonna be good he's gonna fight the shark Eventually, they take him to the shark-infested waters. They bring him down in the cage to observe the sharks. We see some cool sharks. There's some decent footage of sharks in this, if you wanted to look at sharks. Here's the thing. The final showdown between Mike Tyson and the shark. The final showdown between Mike Tyson and the shark is literally Mike Tyson assisted by four other underwater marine biologists grabbing a shark that was maybe maybe six feet long this lemon shark that was maybe six feet long not a great white shark not a hammerhead shark not any type of shark he's not wearing boxing gloves he's not punching the shark he's not trying to knock the shark out he's not punching it in the eyes he's not poking it in the eyes He's grabbing this little fucking lemon shark, smaller than him, with the help of three other marine biologists, and applying a hold where he tickles the snout. He tickles the snout of the shark to disable this little shark. And this is Tyson versus Jaws? Are you fist fucking me? I just felt so ripped off and so disappointed, and I knew, I knew going in, I was going to get ripped off and disappointed. But I thought at least maybe they would show me something. Now, positives, you get to hang out with Mike Tyson for a bit. And there are pretty pictures of sharks. But the reality is, if you want your dose of Mike Tyson, watch Mike Tyson Mysteries or watch him fight old fights. Straight up, if you want to watch pretty pictures of sharks... Watch the rest of Shark Week. But don't try and fucking bullshit the fucking viewer at home and scam them. Promising Mike Tyson versus Jaws. Mike Tyson to fight a great white shark. A fucking 25 foot behemoth shark that was going to fucking rip him in half. 
but maybe Mike Tyson would just fucking be able to punch it just right in the eye and knock it the fuck out. Don't promise people shit like that that you can't deliver. Don't promise something that's going to be severely fucking disappointing. That's not even close. And it's not even like a pleasant surprise. Like sometimes I promise things that I can't deliver. But when I show you the thing that I'm delivering, at least it's something you can go, okay, I know where he's coming from. This is kind of good. Or you go, well, at least he tried. It sucked, but he tried. This shit, they just straight up ripped us off. Mike Tyson versus Jaws. Fucking ripped us off and lied to us and told us that Mike Tyson was going to box a fucking shark. And I know a lot of you who hadn't heard about this until I just said it were so excited. You, Oh my God, Mike Tyson's going to fight a shark. As soon as I heard it, I fucking went to the Discovery On Demand and I watched it because I wanted to see. And a lot of you will still be like, no, PPP, it couldn't have been that gay. I'm going to watch Mike Tyson versus Jaws. No, don't watch it. You're, you're curious about the spectacle? Don't watch it. It's fucking Mike Tyson in chain mail. Underwater with four other marine biologists tickling the snout of a lemon shark for five minutes. It's just terrible. It's just terrible. And it, it just disgusts me that, like, Dana White signed himself on to this, that Mike Tyson signed himself on to this scam. And I know they did it to promote the Roy Jones fight or whatever. And anybody with a brain in their head knew that Mike Tyson wasn't going to die, that this wasn't live footage, that this was pre-recorded footage, and I knew better, and I knew it would be like this, but you know, like, motherfucker, you promised me a spectacle, you promised me a show, I'm gonna be there. Okay, I'm gonna watch it. And it was disappointing as fuck. I know how a lot of you feel about the Kino drum. It's how I felt. It's how I felt about fucking Mike Tyson versus Jaws. I just, just fucking terrible. Just shit. Just loads. Terrible. Drack. A ripoff, a scam, a fraud. A phony. It's about all I got to say about that. Just. I should have known better. But that's the segment on Mike Tyson versus Jaws. Don't waste your time. Don't watch it. Don't look for it. Don't torrent it. Don't go to the Discovery website. Don't check it out. You're going to be wasting your time. You just get to see Mike Tyson tickle a, sh a, a, a lemon snar a shark snout. Fuck me. You know, we do have to talk a little bit about that spick dom, eh? You know, that fucking d loser. Loser. Loser, Dame. Let's not forget, Dame Pesos collected a list of every single person that Mundane Matt had ever blocked on Twitter and laughed at him for being a loser and a fucking pussy and a faggot who couldn't handle criticism, who couldn't handle a joke, right? That was Dame. Dame went on a fucking righteous crusade against Mundane Matt for flagging. For forever, for flagging his videos, for flagging everybody's videos. That's what he built his whole brand, his whole reputation on. And here today, generous Josh and his generosity and his love tried to grace Dame with some riches with some news about how Brianna Wu started a political action committee with Chank Uger called Rebellion Pact, but, but alas, alas, if we see here, the Soilus Matt show, what did the Soilus Matt show do there? He blocked, he blocked generous Josh. What a pussy, what a coward. This man is hitting that block button so fucking often. I mean, it, it just makes your head spin. He's hitting the block button more often than Mexicans make fucking tacos at Taco Bell. This is the reality. 
What happened to you, man? He's been tempted by the evil Daft Dax. That's what fucking happened to this guy. <laughs> oh. You know, I, I, some of the things he did, I guess, were funny. But for the most part, it's the same fucking bit over and over again. The lame laugh, hit the soundboard, done. That's it. That's what Dame does. He hits the soundboard. He does his stupid laugh. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. He's Dame. That's, he has zero talent. The only reason people really supported him was because, oh, this guy doesn't block people. This guy doesn't flag you know, he's kind of funny, he's shitting on the right people, but the reality is he's just a loser. Sad. Sad. And honestly, he's losing fans. That's why he keeps damage controlling it. But every time he keeps damage controlling it, he makes it worse and he loses more fans and more subscribers and more people just start to tune out because they're tired of his bullshit. And I, I want people to remember, when all the dust has settled, and it's been definitively proven that I was right, and the gun guard was wrong, Dame was the first one to gun guard the false flagger, Ethan Ralph. He was the first one to gun guard Ethan Ralph dating a fucking high schooler. He was the first one... To gun guard Ethan Ralph cheating on her. He was the first one to block. He was the first one. He was the first one to do all this fucking gun guarding. And he's been loyal and he's been vicious and he's been keeping it up. He's been working overtime for the gun stoppo, trying to crush all dissent. Any of my fans in his comment section are being banned, their comments deleted. Any of my fans on his Twitter, anybody even associated with me tangentially like Josh being blocked on his Twitter, let nobody forget Dame's role in this. He has fucking made his bed and let him lie in it. Because when the dust finally settles and Ralph's brand is so fucking toxic that anyone associated with it is dead and he's the new mundane Matt, he's the new Donga, then Dame will weep and gnash his teeth. There will be much weeping and gnashing of teeth. But the door to the kingdom of Kino and Nectar will remain shut for Dame. For I never knew him. I never knew him. He was a gunt guard through and through and an abysmal spick swine. So let's address something that is important. Um, that I know a lot of people were excited about and they felt let down. And honestly, I was let down as well by the Kino Drome. Um, <clears throat> the problem was, Spaceman and Prosecutor did not understand, even though I told them before the show, uh, in DMs, and then I told them directly before the show was going on the air exactly what the Kino Drome was. And then even as I interjected as the keynote keeper again and again and again to try and bring them to what people wanted to see, they just wouldn't do it. And it's you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Now, why were they even allowed in? Because we shouldn't allow these political debates in. If it's going to be like that, they just won't be allowed. I'm not at the point yet where I'm going to ban all of them. But there won't be one for a while. It'll probably be another eight or nine kinodromes before I feel comfortable putting on a political debate unless it's two guys I know are going to put on a good show. So if it's somebody like, uh, I don't know, Destiny comes on and he wants to debate all type or something like this, okay, maybe we'll do a show like that. Something something like that. We would do that show because those guys, they're bigger names. People are interested in that. They would want to see that. Or if two guys are just crazy as fuck and I know that they're actually be entertaining, like say uh, if we got Alex Jones, which never happened, but say we got Alex Jones on against some crazy fucker, black nationalist or like a black Hebrew Israelite, something like that I would consider it. But going forward in the future, we just can't have 
these type of discussions where, well, my good sir, allow me to cite this study. I have a study from Harvard. Well, let me tell you about my study from Yale, good sir. And the actual ideas at hand never actually get discussed. There's no sort of actual logic or reasoning going on. It's just, let me tell you about my study and my authority. Well, this judge told me this and that. So, I apologize, guys, about that. I kind of knew that it might go that way. Here's why I let them on, yeah? Prosecutor came to me and he said, I really want to do this debate on your channel. He said to me, we, we, or we can go on, we, we've been offered to go on Modern Day Debates channel. I don't want to go on Modern Day Debates channel. I want to go on your channel. And so I thought, okay. That you, and he had the whole debate already lined up with Spaceman. So he's presenting me this whole debate. It's lined up. And he says, I don't want to go on Modern Day Debate. I want to go on the PPP show. Now, when you say that, that means to me, hey, I'm not going to, I don't want a logical study-based discussion. I want the Kino Drome. I want the Kino Keeper. I want insanity. I want spurging and yelling in an entertaining show. That's what I interpret that as. These guys came on expecting it to be a super highbrow show. Now, if I wanted to run a super highbrow intellectual show, I would have told them that, and you would know. And I could have run a show like that. I could have put on my scholar cap and brought in Godwinson with his scholar cap, and we're going to be real scholastic about this shit and talk about J stores and shit like this. But no, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to have a fun, entertaining show where Spurgs spurg at Spurgs about Spurgy topics and they act like speds and embarrass themselves and entertain the audience. That's what we wanted. And, and we didn't get that out of fucking Spaceman and, and, and fucking and the prosecutor. And they knew what the show was about. And the fact of the matter is, I honestly think that the prosecutor just heard the buzz about my channel on Cow or on Kiwi Farms. Or wherever the fuck he was going, he was saying, oh, you're really beloved for what you're doing, and I love what you're doing. Well, if you really loved what I was doing, and you understood it, you would have understood what the Kinodrome was about and not acted like a faggot. The prosecutor got all bum hurt at the end when we brought on callers, and he realized that this wasn't modern day debates. Do you know what I mean? It's not modern day debates there, buddy. You could have went on that show. It was a bigger audience. But my audience are hardcores, and if you had impressed them, then you would have won over fans. Instead, you fucking embarrassed yourself, cucked to Spaceman. In my opinion, Spaceman won. Because you cucked to his frame of reference. And you guys had hardly any disagreement to be had. You're, you two are this close on the political spectrum. You might think you're here and here, but you're here and here. And it's just too basic, bitch, for my show. So the prosecutor wanted to threaten he would never come on again and try and say that, like... <laughs> and he wanted to say that, like, oh, I'll never fucking come on this. Say, you know, you're not allowed back. You're not allowed back because you fucking suck. You embarrassed yourself. You embarrassed me, and you're fucking banned for being a faggot! Now, Spaceman, I think, can be redeemed. And he is going to get a second chance in the Kinodrome. But the prosecutor is fucking cut. He is fucking cut. Now, why is Spaceman getting a second chance? Because Spaceman knows he fucked up, and he's going to come on the show on face cam and do a drinking debate he is going to do that and he's going to try and redeem himself so fingers crossed that that comes through for Kinodrome too now <clears throat> the rest of the show went fairly well and I did like the juxtaposition I thought it was funny because you have these guys trying to do their circle jerk me an intellectual debate then Surfer and Heff come in and just smarten them up to reality 
What and the callers came in and just ran train on the fags, which was good. It was funny to see, <clears throat> and it, it brought some life back into the room. And then the Anaconda versus Jaws debate was very good. I thought. Um, I thought it was it was what we were looking for. It wasn't perfect by any means. They weren't the best competitors we've ever seen. But Grim Shears is invited back because he won the debate. He's 1-0 in the Kinodrome. Um, he won it with the Anaconda. Grim Shears is saying that he believes in the hollow earth, and he genuinely does. He wants to debate anyone out there who believes in the flat earth. That will be preferential. If you believe in the flat earth and you want to argue with the hollow earther, that's a debate I want to see happen, Okay. Now, if you believe the Earth is round, you can also contact me to debate him. But preferential treatment will go to flat earthers. So contact me at Power of the Truth on Twitter if you want to debate Grim Shears on whether or not the Earth is hollow or flat or round. Okay? He thinks it's hollow. I think that that might be an interesting fucking debate because it's pretty autistic and, and pretty funny. Now, I have another guy who wants to do a drinking debate. He's willing to come on face cam. So you need to be willing to come on face cam. You can wear a mask if you want. It's a little gay, but you can wear a mask. It's a shot of liquor every five minutes. He wants... These are pretty autistic, but he wants... Um, did StarCraft steal Verg from Warcam or 40K's Tyranids? Or vice versa? Um... <clears throat> Or he wants, he says Halo 2 is the best Halo game. So if you think Combat Evolved or 3 or Reach was better, you can debate him on that. But his preference is whether or not 40k and StarCraft stole it from Starship Troopers, or if StarCraft stole the Zerg from Warhammer 40k. I don't really know what he's talking about there because I've never followed Warhammer. Um, but it could, it could be entertaining, and he's willing to drink and come on camera. We have an opponent for Spaceman and his drinking debate on Game of Thrones, <coughs> which we want to tentatively line up for the second show. Uh, I'm really trying to put together a good card for Kinodrome 2. I want it to be uh, a better show. I don't want any bullshit like the first show. Um, honestly, a lot of shows struggle with their first show or even their first couple sh episodes. Star Trek The Next Generation had a very poor entire first season. Uh, and then it, it really coalesced and came together. The first WrestleMania really wasn't that good. Um, you know, even the second WrestleMania wasn't really that good. I want to uh, improve the quality substantially of the show. Aesthetically, it will be overhauled some. Because it didn't look very good. We, again, we put this together last minute, kind of. We couldn't really get any Spurgs to volunteer. I think a lot of it was that they didn't know if it was really going to happen or what it would be like. Now that people have kind of seen the format and kind of understand it, I think we'll get more volunteers. Um, but I want, I want uh, even more volunteers. I'm just seeing who else we have um, who wants to come on. I think that's it in terms of people who need an opponent. So we need an opponent for the Hollow Earth, Flat Earther Preferred. We need an opponent for another guy on Warhammer 40k versus uh, StarCraft. I think so. Yeah, StarCraft versus Warhammer 40k or Halo 2 being the best Halo if you disagree with that. A drinking debate is that one. The Hollow Earth one isn't a drinking debate. But I'd like it if it was. Um, I'm hoping that we get the first one of these drinking debates. It's going to be Friday. I believe it's going to be fr this Friday. 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time will be Kinodrome 2. I'm christening it The Redemption. Here's the thing. If I don't get the card that I want for Kinodrome 2, like, there's a lot of stuff that's really exciting that could be on the Kinodrome 2 card that I, I'm not going to expose yet. Uh, until it's fully confirmed, because I don't want to I don't want to advertise something to you guys and not be able to deliver it. So I will delay 
Kinodrome 2 if I can't get what I want, and it might come next week. For Kinodrome 3 as well, we're looking to get uh, some uh, bigger names in there. You know, make it like Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan. We're look, we're targeting some some bigger names. We'll see if we can get a good main event for Kinodrome 3. But my focus right now is on Kinodrome 2 for this Friday. And I can make changes and I can listen to your feedback and your advice on how to make it a better show, which I will for sure. Um, so I've implemented some rules and I'll get to those in a minute. But the reality is, guys, if you guys don't come on the air and you're not willing to come on as guests and argue about the shit that you care about and you're passionate about and yell at other guys, the show isn't going to work. You, the audience, need to participate in the program if you can. If you feel like you're talented enough or articulate enough, you need to participate because we're not fucking... We're not bringing in a bunch of bullshit cocksuckers like Vouch or Destiny. I said it earlier in this, we might bring them on, but I really don't want to. I don't want to if I don't have to. I really want it to be guys from the community <clears throat> turning up, getting drunk, getting fucked up, getting high, arguing about nerdy shit with real hatred and real conviction, and, and that's what I want the show to be. But I've, Im I've implemented some rules Rule one, no citations in the Kinodrome. I swear to fucking God, if somebody tries to cite anything, any sort of authority ever again, I'm going to fucking just kick them out. And these rules will be explained to anybody before they come on the air, I swear to God. Rule two, no studies in the fucking Kinodrome. I don't want to hear about your fucking 18 pages of studies. Fuck off. Fuck. Fuck. Rule three, no crying about logical fallacies in the Kinodrome. I fucking swear to God, if I hear somebody say, that's a two-quart fallacy, that's an ad hominem, that's a straw man, I will just fucking throw them out. I don't care anymore. I don't care. You will be fucking cast out. Um, I've already tried to play nice with fucking people, prosecutor and spaceman. They fucked me. So there's no more fucking, like, bullshitting. If you suck, you'll be kicked from the show, and the show will end. I don't care if I don't have backups. I don't care if I, have, I don't have replacement guests. I won't waste people's fucking time, okay? Rule four, no faggotry in the Kinodrome. If I see faggotry, I am just going to fucking kick you the fuck out. No faggots in the Kinodrome. Rule number five, there are no rules. <laughs> in the Kino drum. I tried to operate with just that one rule. But unfortunately, people don't understand the spirit of Kino Dogme. They don't understand understand the spirit of the Kino drum. And so I have no choice but, you know, to fucking create six other fucking rules. Rule number six if the audience or the Kino keeper think you suck, you are going to get kicked. If you are boring, and you can't string fucking two words together, and you come on the show, you're going to get mocked, you're going to get shit on, and you're going to get kicked off the fucking show. I will open a poll. I don't know where it will be. I don't know where Twitter or whatever the fuck. I don't know what's going to be the best mechanism for this. But if over 60% of the audience thinks that you suck, I'm kicking you off the show. I'm not going to have it be a repeat of Kinodrome 1. That was a disaster. It wasn't what I wanted. Godwinson was right about that debate, and I should have fucking listened, but I wanted to give the prosecutor a chance because he asked me, and he turned down modern-day debates for my show, which I thought meant he understood what the show would be about, but no, he's not actually a fan that watches my shit. He just heard I was the hottest new thing and tried to jump on a trend. That's the reality. Rule 7... Um, the winner will be decided by the audience or a panel of judges. I'm thinking that I want to bring in judges for Kinodrome 2, not only to assign a winner and a loser, but also I want others to be there with me to help me moderate it. Because when I'm in character as the Kino Keeper, I have to stay in character as the Kino Keeper, okay? And sometimes there are certain way, like ways of correcting somebody that I can't do as the Kino Keeper. People need to show the Kino Keeper respect, but I think that I want Ghoul and I want Kraut 
or I want some other guys, I'm not sure yet, Godwinson, wherever he's at when he comes back, then we'll go to the original concept of the Nectar Necromancer champion versus the Kino Keeper. But as it is, I promised people Kino Drone, and we're going to deliver it, even though Godwinson is missing in action. So there will be judges to help me fucking keep control and kick faggots and make fun of them if they're being retarded. Okay? That's... Those are the seven rules. It's pretty fucking simple. We may need to add more rules going forward, but we're going to... All right. It's time to address the Toronto Shakespearean tragedy, the tragedy in Toronto. I talked about this before this series even began. I told you to a T, to a fucking T how it would end. Exactly how it would go. Exactly how it would go. I didn't know who would win every single game, but I knew what the final result would be. Before the series even started, I said, the series will go the distance and Toronto will lose in the most heartbreaking fashion possible after getting their fans' hopes up as high as humanly possible. That's how it always goes. It's always the most painful fucking way to lose every time. Every fucking time. And it was no exception this time. What ends up happening this time? So the, the Leafs like lose the first game, win the second game, lose the third game, the fourth game. It, they're down 3 nothing, heading into like the third. And it's like, look, it's over. Everybody is like, look, this is over. It's done. We lost. Better luck next year. Everybody's in acceptance. Look, we just didn't have it. We weren't defensively sound. We were too soft of a team. The The youth still hasn't become seasoned yet, even though they've had years now to figure it out. It is what it is. And then what happens? The Leafs score three goals in six minutes to tie the game and send it to overtime. And then you think, oh, well, the Leafs will lose it in overtime. No, they actually won. Suddenly, where there was no hopes and zero expectations, all the pressure is back on. We're going to the cup, baby. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. Right? It's coming. So we go into game five. What happens? The vaunted Leafs offense, the best offense in the league. Marner, Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, all these motherfuckers. What do they do? How many goals do they produce? Fucking zero. They shit their pants and do nothing. A total fucking embarrassment and a disgrace. And it fucking stings. It fucking burns. But you know what? I bet money on Columbus because I knew, I knew what was going to happen. And all the fucking stupid bettors fucking piled on that fucking Leafs money line. Just fucking piled on it to the point where the three-way money line on the Blue Jackets was 4-1. to one. In a game that at most is a coin flip for the Maple Leafs, at no point, the Leafs were the betting favorite in every game. At no point should they have been the betting favorite. At best, they should have been even money. And at worst, they should have been 3-1 to one underdogs in a lot of these games. But because the fucking betting public in Toronto were fucking idiots and pumped tons of fucking money in, I profited to the tune of $60 there off the Leafs getting out of the playoffs. Does it make me feel good? Not really. Not really. I would have sooner bought the Leafs a fucking win and lost the money. But I made money because I knew... I knew it was going to happen. And every fucking season, it's the same. It's the same. And do you want to know why it is? Honestly, when you really think about it, why can't Toronto win the cup? This is the mecca of hockey. The fans love hockey. It's where the Hockey Hall of Fame is. It's, where, it's the most dedicated, most loyal, most passionate fan base, probably in all of sports, even more so than the Chicago Cubs, or fans of England's national team. I mean, it's pretty fucking serious, 
Okay, if, if you're a diehard Leafs fan, you're a diehard Leafs fan, and you fucking bleed the blue. That's the truth, okay? And that's why the team fucking sucks. Because we all will buy the $20 Leaf flag to put on our car. We'll all buy the $15 Maple Leaf Avenue fucking thing to hang up in our garage. We'll all buy the $100 fucking jersey every year. We buy the NHL game every fucking year. We buy tickets at exorbitant rates, like $400 fucking dollars to sit in the nosebleeds. It sells out every night, every night, no matter what, with corporate stooges and, and fucking people who sit on their hands during the home games, giving the ACC a shitty fucking atmosphere while they serve sushi at fucking hockey games. The players, they get here and they feel like they've made it. They're a Toronto Maple Leaf. The endorsement money is huge in Toronto. Everywhere you go, your meals are for free. You're getting treated like a king. Everywhere you go, people, if you're a Maple Leaf player, they line up in the street to kiss your feet. What favor can I do for you, sir? Let me give you a loan at low interest rates. Let me give you a free car. Let me give you this. Let me give you that. And the players feel like they've arrived. They have nothing to work for. It's called blue and white disease for a fucking reason. And the ownership, which was the fucking pension plan, the teacher's pension plan. Can you imagine it? The fucking Ontario teachers own the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they sit there and they cry about how oppressed they are. As they have like the most gold-plated fucking pension in the world. As they own the pension plan puppet fucking Maple Leafs. Shitty fucking management from the top down that has no motivation financially to succeed with the product on the ice is what causes this. And the idea of building a team from the fucking offense only. This team has no grit. It has no physicality. It has no fucking balls. There's not one player on that fucking Maple Leafs team that can fucking check for fucking shit. There's not one player on that fucking Maple Leafs team who will drop the gloves other than Jason Spezza the other night. The fact that Jason Spezza is even playing in a Toronto uniform makes me sick. It makes me ill. I fucking hate Jason Spezza. I fucking hate Daniel Alfredson. I fucking hate Danny Heatley. Do you want to know why? Because when I was a fucking kid... The Senators were good with that. Those three guys and the Leafs had fuck all. Fuck all. And they never made the playoffs and Ottawa went to the cup. All the kids in school, well, most of them, were Ottawa bandwagon fans. Who would have been Leafs fans 10 years earlier in the 90s with Gilmore. But they just wanted to bandwagon the Canadian team that was successful so they were Sens fans. And I had to defend fucking Thomas Caberle and Alexander McGinley and fucking Brian McCabe. Leave Brian McCabe alone! And all this fucking shit. I had fucking nothing. What did I have? Matt Sundin? Fuck me. There was like a, a one year during my childhood in like 2004. 16 years ago when they beat Ottawa in the playoffs. I was like 8 years old. That's it. That is all that has happened in my entire lifetime as a Maple Leafs fan. That's all that there is. And it, when is it going to fucking end? I, I just say blow the whole fucking thing up. I don't even want them to go to the playoffs anymore. I, it's, it's just bullshit. You know? What's the point of going every single year when you're just going to exit in the first round? They're not getting any new prospects. These fucking players, they have no heart. Want to talk about Austin Matthews and his 40, 47 goals and where the fuck was Matthews tonight? Where was he tonight? Couldn't even give us one goal. People are up there blaming Freddie Anderson. Blaming Freddie fucking Anderson for this performance. They couldn't even give him one goal. If you can't score one goal in 60 minutes, you can't win a hockey game. 
And I get it. Columbus had good goaltending. They had good defense. They shut it down. But when you have Tavares, when you have Nylander, when you have Matthews, when you have Marner, when you have the offensive gifts and talents that this team has, to not even score one fucking goal in the go-home game is a fucking embarrassment and a joke. And I don't know if it'll ever get any better because they still sell the jerseys every year. They still sell out the stadium every fucking game. So unless Leaf fans are willing to just say, honestly, I'm turning it off, which is what I'm going to do. I I won't be watching it next year. At least not until the playoffs. That's, again, what I did this year. I watched a handful of games. I looked at this team, and I go, they still don't have what it takes. They constantly are losing to teams that they should be able to beat. For whatever reason, the Leafs always play to the level of the opponent. If it's a better team, they come prepared. If it's a loser team, they come in underprepared. They don't have consistency. They don't have a proper mindset. The coaching is fucked. But what can you do when there's no defense? When one defensive injury fucks the entire season up, what did you expect? You would go through the whole playoffs without one injury to a defenseman, really? But this whole idea that they can go on a playoff run with a team that's softer than a baby's ass where none of the players have any grit or grind in them, any sort of resiliency. And people would say, oh my God, well they came back those three goals in the six minutes and there was your resiliency. Then where was it in game five? They lost it. It was to set it up as a fucking tragedy. And you know it and I know it. If you're a Leafs fan, you know what happened. And you know you need to stop watching. You know you need to tune out. You know you need to stop buying the jerseys. You need to stop buying the flag for your car. You need to stop buying the blankets and the pillows and the fucking curtains. As a kid, I had my whole bedroom Toronto Maple Leafs. Every wall painted Maple Leaf blue and white with the Maple Leaf fucking wallpaper. I had Coach's Corner carpet. In my fucking room, I had the Maple Leaf champagne coin bottle. I had fucking everything. Bobbleheads. I had Maple Leaf nutcrackers for fuck's sake. I had a Maple Leaf nutcracker. You need to stop buying this shit. You have to realize that they will never improve unless there is a financial incentive for them to improve. And people think that this is good enough. No, it is not good enough for them to just make the playoffs anymore. It's unacceptable. They need to win a Stanley Cup. It has been 60 fucking years. It has Well, it's been 53 fucking years. Since 1967. I think that's 53 years. It's been 53 fucking years. For the biggest hockey market in the world. Canada hasn't won a Stanley Cup in nearly 30 years. 1992, the Montreal Canadiens. That was the last time a Canadian team won a championship. And the odds of Montreal or Calgary or Vancouver bringing it home this year are slim to none. Calgary probably has the best chance, but even still, from what I saw, they did handle Winnipeg, but it was a Winnipeg team that they handicapped and crippled. Let's see them get out of this fucking next round here against Dallas, and Dallas is a dangerous team. The only real positive this year is Boston lost its seeding advantage. At least we didn't go out to Boston this year. That's something. And Boston's probably going to go out to Carolina. But it's just, I'm so tired of it. I just don't care anymore. I have fucking bled blue and white since I was fucking born, man. And it's just embarrassing. It's humiliating, and it's just got to stop. The Toronto make me laughs make me fucking cry. Genuinely. But I didn't even cry last night when it fucking happened because it was just expected. I had my money on that outcome because I knew it would happen. It's tough. It's tough. So I won't be watching them next year. 
They need to blow up the whole fucking team, trade Matthews, trade Marner, trade Nylander, just tank it for about five, ten years. Just I want last place finishes. I want people to start tuning out. I want people to stop watching. And then maybe a new ownership group will come in and buy them. But we know that's not going to happen. People have a loyalty to this franchise that defies all logic and reason. It just starts to defy any explanation, any rational explanation, because it's an emotional connection to it. You watch it growing up. You watch it growing up with your grandpa or your dad, your family members, and you get that connection to it. And you think about those childhood memories and you get all warm and fuzzy and you want to take your son to the games and you want it. But don't do it. Don't do it. Stop wasting your money. Stop wasting your time. At the end of the day, it's just a fucking sport. It is not It is not the most important thing in the world. I understand when I tell Canadians that hockey is not the most important thing. They say, fuck you, PPP. But really, no. Like, if you really care about this team, you need to stop supporting it. You need to stop giving them your money. You need to stop watching. Because otherwise, they have zero incentive to improve. This is the the bottom line point. I've rambled about it long enough, but honestly, it just makes me sad. This is probably the first and last time you're going to hear me talk about hockey on this channel. Maybe I'll cover some of the playoffs. Probably not, though. I just don't give a shit. I'm probably going to go back to watching cucked basketball, where the white players wear ally on their shirt and they fucking kneel and all this shit. It's tough. Welcome back to the International Grifting Championships. The results of the final four to be announced here live on the People's Populist Press. Who will emerge in the finals? Let's find out. Alrighty there, guys. International Grifting Championships really fucking heating up there, guys. Big time. We gave the final four over the weekend. And there were mass, massive, massive, massive campaigns by both Dick Masterson and Nick Ricada to win in their bracket. As both Nick Fuentes and Ethan Ralph were shamefully silent uh, and didn't didn't campaign to, to win Biggest Grifter. Um, you know, Dick Masterson and Nick Ricada are financially successful at grifting. And so they want to trumpet from the rooftops how how great a grifter they are and how they fuck over their fans and scam them and all this shit. Now, initially, it started off there where Dick was winning. Dick sent out a tweet telling his fans he was going to buy them wings. He made the case that Ricardo worked too many streams a week, whereas he only did one show a week. Ricardo did seven shows, and that's blue-collar work. Ricada fired back saying he was going to raise his merchandise prices 10% and give a promo code for 5% off. This was a fucking massive showdown. Masterson was in the lead, but the Ricada faithful fucking clawed back and grinded their way to a lead. And with one hour left in the poll, I don't think they're going to relinquish that lead. <clears throat> with 4,188 votes counted in an hour left, Nick Ricada is currently at 53.3% to 46.7% for Dick Masterson. At this point, I don't think there's anybody that can stop Nick Ricada's march to the championship. He is going to hoist that trophy high. He's going to wear the crown as king of the grifters. There's, there's pretty much nobody that can stop him. I mean, he's gone through... Think about who he's beat. He's beat Owen Benjamin, the architect, the engineer of Bertaria, where the gravy floweth like fucking wine. You know, a $200,000 scam. He asked for $2 million. Imagine having that big of balls as a grifter to demand $2 million there from your fans. To demand $2 million from the fans and then you actually get two hundred grand, And then you say, oh, well, you know, we'll still get there. Just give me more money. <laughs> Ricada beat that man. 
then, in the most shocking upset I think we've ever seen, Nick Ricada went up against Anita Sarkeesian. Anita Sarkeesian raised $30,000 to open a Discord account. Anita Sarkeesian scammed people for like $200,000 to do the feminist frequency fucking damsel in distress series there. Anita did so many petty scams. And yet, Ricada won. His shameless anime grift in scamming the Vic Magnata fanboys. His fucking $20 super chat shit. It put him over the top of Anita. Then he went up against Dick Masterson, the new Project 2 mob boss, the mafioso, the Don, who everybody had to kiss his ring two months ago and try and pretend I wasn't funny and that my show sucked. The reality of it was it was exposed as a scam and a fraud, and now Dick and Nick are lining up to kiss my ring and participate in the show and all this shit, and I don't reach back out to them. Why? Because I really don't like them, and they're slimy, and I know they're just trying to ensnare me and try and make me into Dick's puppet there or some weird shit. I'm just not interested in that. I'm not interested, guys. So I, I know you guys were engaging with this in the hopes of, like, flying me out to Los Angeles to pitch me on how I could live in the pleasure dome of the crack shack and have threesomes with 40 year old women and do LSD you know like again like me and Dick do have some things in common I mean look look at the ceiling look at the ceiling there Dick you know if it wasn't for you being such a shameless slimy grifter with no principles or morals who would be trying to corrupt me into Judaism, you know, I wouldn't have had a problem with collaborating with you or Nick, but I, I know what's going on here. It's very slimy. Some shady stuff going on. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, fuck. Ricada beat that man. And look, in the other bracket, it's the... It's not the successful grifter bracket. It's the lives with their mum bracket. It's Ethan Ralph versus Nick Fuentes. Can either of these men stop Nick Ricada? I just don't think so. Because in the Ricada and Masterson poll, there were 4,000 votes. 4,000 votes. If Ricada wants this, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. I mean... Uh, it doesn't matter if Fuentes or Ralph would deserve it more. Ricardo wants it more. He wants it bad. He wants to be known as the grifting kingpin. He wants to be known as the most shameless and slimy fuck in the world. With his big nose there. A generous Josh told me he wasn't a Jew. I'm not too sure. I'm going full Rand, but he's a Jew and a fed. In reality, he's just a slimy grifter, is what he is. But uh, anyway, looking at the results of our other Final Four matchup, with 883 votes and an hour left, I don't think this is changing. It's no surprise, Ethan Ralph, 66.9 to Nick Fuentes, 33.1%. Now, this sets up the final showdown to be between Nick Ricada and Ethan Ralph. This is a tough fucking matchup. On the one hand, you have the Vic Magnata scamming the anime pay piggies, $20 super chats, fake legal advice, promising to raise merchandise prices and then give a 5% discount, crazy shit like this, versus the fucking fan who had to pay like $1,000 to throw ice on Ethan Ralph, the Miami Kickstarter grift, the Knoxville Grift, the fucking Lemons, uh, the Heel Stream, the, all this fucking shameless grifting that Ethan Ralph has done. I mean, holy fuck, it's a tough matchup. It really is between these two. They really deserve to be in the finals of the International Grifting Championship. 
Um, and, and it's up to you guys to decide. The poll will be going live when the show goes live. Uh, and and you, So it'll be live right now when you watch this. You can vote. It's going to be open for uh, three days, I think. I'm going to keep it open for three days. And then we'll announce the winner. Now, a lot of people said to me, but PPP, in terms of the International Grifting Championship, um, you know, it, there's got to be... There's got to be some other people um, brought in. And I agree. And so some man drafted up another bracket for us. And after the champion of this is announced, we're going to bring in the Legends of Grifting. And whoever the champion is between Nick Ricada and Ethan Ralph will face the champion of the Legend of Grifting for greatest grifter of all time. The Gagot. The Gagot. The greatest grifter of all time. And uh, I just want to show you guys that now. Uh, before I do, I just give me a quick second. I just wanted to preview that matchup and give you my thoughts on Ralph versus Ricada a little bit more deeply and who will win. Ralph has been cruising through his brackets. He crushed Memology or, or whoever the hell it was, Dame. He crushed Dame. He beat Medicare. He's fucking schooled Nick Fuentes every time by a 30, 40 point, 50 point margin. Huge margins he's run up. Ricada, it's always been very close, but he's been up against some stiff competition. But Ralph has beat, fuck, he beat Medicare. He beat, Dame's not that big of a deal, but he beat Fuentes this time handily. So it's not to say that Ralph doesn't have a chance in this fight. It's just to say that Ricada is tipping the scales in his favor by getting all his fanboys to vote for him, whereas Ralph is embarrassed of the award and doesn't want it. So in a, in a real sense, I, I actually would like to see Ralph win because he, he would be embarrassed by the award, whereas Nick Ricada might actually fucking do an acceptance speech, which in its own way is pretty funny, and if he wins, I hope he does, but fuck, man. So here it is, the Legends of Grifting bracket for 2020. PPP presents the 2020 Legends of Grifting. In the opening round, we have Sargon of Akkad versus Toad McKinley. That's going to be epic. Boogie2988 versus Jeff Holiday. Jake Paul versus Destiny. Ethan Klein versus Keemstar. A fucking death match in the first round. This is straight up like fucking Owen versus Nick Ricada. The winner of that is is a, almost destined to come out of this bracket. Milo Yiannopoulos versus Vox Day. Dark Side Phil versus Hassan Piker. Blair White versus V Monroe. Armored Skeptic versus Andy Worski. So this is the Legends of Grifting fucking bracket in the International Grifting League. We've got a lot of names on there that people thought were missed. Now, there may be an e-girl exclusive bracket that comes out after this, but the winner of Legends of Grifting is going to go on to face the champion between Nick Fuentes and Ethan Ralph for greatest grifter of all time. So that's going to be exciting, exciting news in the International Grifting League. Um, we're going to crown our champion of the International Grifting League 2020. We're going to crown next week the winner of the Legends of Grifting, and then the week after that, the ultimate title, the King of Kings, the King of Grifts, the greatest grifter of all time, and the matchup between the winner of this bracket and the winner of Ricada and Ethan Ralph for all the fucking marbles. Get excited, guys. The grift is here. All right. I think that's enough for this breakdown. Um, there might be one more closing segment on the show. I don't know. They're actually... <clears throat> it's now the time in the show to exhibit our theatrical element of the program. That's right. Tonight, we're going to be exhibiting a movie in its entirety. It's going to be an incredible movie, guys. Please watch. Yeah. 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 Fucking bitches. Matata, you dirty cock suckers. Yeah. 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 All right. DNA is out of luck. I don't really give a fuck. DNA can suck my dick. DNA can lick my nuts. Cause they suck. DNA can go to hell. 
WWE instead, bitch. Yo, what's up, Gemini? Yeah. I just woke up. Fuck, I'm trying to watch TNA and I keep passing out. So fucking boring. Yeah. Fuck, man. I gotta try to do a review of this there. I'm gonna watch the main event. Their main event's about to start. It's, uh... Bobby Lashley against DJ Zima Ion for the world title. <laughs> Imagine that, a garbage main event like this. Well, anyway, Jem, I'll let you go there so I can watch this shit, and uh, I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. All right. Let's get into this shit. Seema Ion against Bobby Lashley. How the fuck did they expect to get ratings with this? Botch! Another fucking cheap botch there, Ion. Alright, let's go Bobby Lashley. Hit the, the gore, or the spear, whatever the fuck you call it there. Boom! There we go. One more cheap uh, TNA match there. One, two, kick out! What the fuck? Zima Ion kicked out of Lash... What the hell? Zima Ion... Zima Ion just hit his finisher on Lashley. Say it ain't so. One, two, three, what? What? DJ Zima Ion is the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. What the fuck is this shit? They had this crap with the final deletion, three people were interested, and they go and fuck it up with this. Unbelievable. I need to make a video about this shit. Alright, time to record this shit. TNA fans are going to be so happy. Zima Ion, even though it sucks, fucking cock. I'm gonna get a bunch of dislikes, but fuck it. Let's do this shit. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, TNA, TNA, holy fuck, man. What the fuck was this? And we thought this company sucked before, you know. Going into a fucking junkyard motherfucking warehouse. They had motherfucking garbage all the time there. Trying to redo the New World Order. It's been one fail after another for years. And now they just went beyond fail. Beyond fail, alright. They just put the belt... On DJ Z? You serious, bro? DJ Z. A little punk, loser, prick, no talented motherfucker. That is your TNA world champion. They could put the fucking belt on the St. Bernard. You pieces of shit would still accept that as a, a fucking champion. What a motherfucking joke you are, TNA fans. Huh? All you do is suck dick. You suck fucking penis all day. You like to s fucking shove penises up your assholes, don't you? You dirty, rotten pieces of shit. You fat, dumb, ugly, scumbag motherfuckers. Fuck you and fuck Zima Ion. Like I'm gonna fucking tolerate this, huh? Andre Corbet makes a video. Says that Zima Ion is a good champ. What? You just cannot be serious, huh? Really? Really, Andre? You think Zima Ion is good enough to be the TNA World Champion? You must be out of your fucking mind, Andre. Huh? Well, anyway, there. Zima Ion, the little loser. He's ugly. He weighs like a hundred pounds. Some kind of shitty rave. 
garbage DJ gimmick. He can't even do the DJ shit for real. All they had him do was honk a horn there. Ba -ba -ba! And then TNA ran out of money. They couldn't even afford this fake DJ shit he was using. He had to make horn sounds with his mouth. Ba -ba -ba -ba! You think that's your fucking world champion? What's he gonna do when he's gonna cut his big championship promo? Is he gonna do stupid fucking horn sounds? Ba -ba 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 -ba! You fucking sick, demented, dick-sucking idiots. Fuck TNA, fuck TNA fans, and fuck Zima Ion. Until next time, peace! Yo, Peter Gilmore, man, what's happening, dog? The face! Uh, not much, I just uploaded a video about uh, DJ Zima Ion winning the TNA title. <laughs> Fucking losers, eh, Peter? But um, I'm just going to read my, uh, my comments there and I'll call you back, Peter, yeah. I'll call you right back there, just, just reading my... All right, okay, bye. I ain't going to call back. All right, what kind of comments do I have here? Oh shit, American Alucard. WJ, you are being biased. You are a TNA fanboy. And you want to have sex with the Muppets. <laughs> Fucking Alucard. Dude never changes. Who do we have here? Michael Sean Paulston. TNA is better than WWE. WWE is a perverted federation. Pat Patterson, blah, 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 Illuminati. By the way, <clears throat> Dark Horse just made you a video. Ah, uh, fuck. Here we go again, huh? Dark Horse just can't let me have an opinion. Should I watch this? Should I not watch it? Fuck it. Let me go watch this shit. Alright. Take a look at this fucking crap here. W. Jet. It's me, Dark Horse. You fat son of a bitch. You went and contradicted yourself again in your recent TNA video. CWJ, you say you like Finn Balor, WJ, and he's just a, a small guy too, huh? But for some reason you don't like DJ Zima Ion, and he's a small guy, WJ, you piece of shit, big fat Canadian tumble lard you. You contradicted yourself, you son of a bitch, always fucking with your subscribers, you think you're the king around here, do you? You ain't the king of shit. My shit is better than yours, WJ. And this time, I ain't gonna take this line down. Not only am I gonna bury you in the feud, WJ, well, I'm gonna bury you in real life too, asshole, you piece of shit. Expect me and my friends to come to your house and beat your ass, huh? You thought you were safe, WJ. You were just gonna have your little opinions about wrestling. Well, fuck your opinions. You and your opinions suck. And I'm going to see you soon. And my friends are going to see you soon. And we're going to kick your ass, WJ. I'm going to talk to you later. Fuck you. <sighs> the fuck kind of video was this? Like, talk to Jerry there. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, send the link to the hangout to Robbie Battle there. Yeah, Robbie, what's up? Did you guys see what Dark Horse has been doing? Fuck, man. Oh, he makes a video on me because of Zima Ion there because, I don't know, I guess he's trying to start drama. Nah. He just wants subscribers, Jerry. You know, I'm not even going to respond to him. I'm going to block him on Facebook. 
you know, Twitter may be there, but, uh, you know, I'm done fucking responding to this guy. Time after time, Jared. Since 2013, this guy's been after me, you know what I mean? It's time to put an end to it there. Nah, nah, no. He says he's going to kick my ass for my wrestling opinions, you know. The guy's all talk, no action. He's not going to do a damn thing there, fuck. Oh, uh, Jerry, somebody's at the door. I'm going to have to let you go there. You doing a hangout tonight, Robbie? Yeah, try not to fall asleep, brother. Jesus loves you, buddy. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to go answer the door there. Hello? Who is it? I won't open the door unless you tell me who it is. remember me? Nope. Never heard of you. Well, anyway, I have been sent here by a dark horse. And you and I, we are gonna fight! Hiya! Alright, buddy. Let's do this thing. Hiya! Just calm down. Dark Horse wants a response so damn bad, then he's gonna get one right now! Alrighty! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a little bit of that drama. That YWC drama. So Dark Horse made me a video. He said I contradicted myself when it comes to Zima Ion and Finn Balor and I did not fucking contradict myself. Then he was threatening to kick my ass and he sent a goddamn ninja to my place to kick my ass. You have crossed the fucking line and you, sir, are dead. You're dead. That's right. You want to start another feud? You want another battle? You want another war? Well, this is going to be the war to end all fucking wars, Dark Horse. You fucking want it, you got it. The fucking feud is back on, and this time, it's personal. Until next time, peace! Kyle Braschetto, you piece of shit, huh? Have you heard about this war with Dark Horse there? I'm gonna need your help. Fuck, this is getting serious. What? You can't help me because you're going to work at the bakery? Oh, well, fuck you then, Kyle. Uh, ka. I'm Cal Bruschetto. I'm so cool. I wear a leather jacket. I want to have sex with Righty. Yeah, I'm Kyle. I'm so cool. Kyle, I just heard something there. I'm gonna have to let you go. 
Who's there? Come out here right now where I can see you. Who's there? Who is it? Come out here right now where I can see you. Oh, thank God, wrestling bitch, it's you. We got a big situation going on here. Listen, wrestling bitch. Dark Horse is coming after me. He wants to kick my ass. He's sending people to kick my ass. I'm going to need you to help me out. Do you have my back or what? So, you, you got my back or not? What? You're not going to help me out. Why? Ah, oh, come on. Did Dark Horse brainwash you to turn against me? And now you want to fight me? Oh, shit. All right. If we got to fucking throw down, motherfucker, then we're going to fucking throw down. Yeah. What'd you do? What'd you do? Oh, oh. Hey, don't leave me. Come back. Come back. Come back. Wrestling bitch might have left us, but you still got my back, don't you, buddy? Fuck you, wrestling chaser. I don't want fuck all to do with you. You fat, ugly jobber. Go fuck yourself. Darko say you contradict yourself and I agree with him. Fuck you. No, buddy. No. Please. Please don't turn on me, buddy. No. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. You flip flopping some bitch, how are you? Uh, times are tough for me, man. I'm getting my ass kicked. Everybody's leaving me. Dark Horse is gonna destroy my life. Uh, I can't talk right now, buddy. I'm way too depressed. I'm just gonna sit here and think for a while. of J 
You know what? I'm sick and tired of being depressed, being scared, feeling like a fat, worthless son of a bitch. You know what? I'm gonna take a nap, have a good night's sleep, and I'll be ready to deal with this in the morning. Hopefully, I don't have any nightmares or something. Hey, WJ, hey! Gemini here, back with another video in your dream. Gemini? What are you doing here? I'm here to help you against the dark forces of Dark Horse and all his minions. WJ, you need to get in shape. You need to do some training. Do a training montage to, to help you fight Dark Horse. Well, good golly, thank you, Gemini. What else should I do? One more thing, WJ. When the time is right, use the DVD. The sexy DVD of John Cena. Use it. You're going to know when the time is right. Well, all right, Gemini. Pass me the DVD. Well, I'll give you a DVD, all right. Right up your ass. Ah! Ah! What? What the hell did you shove it up my fucking ass for? Oh, well, what's wrong, Daddy? You asked me for a DVD, I handed you a DVD, what's the problem? Well, you could have just, you know, gave me the DVD in my hands. You know, no reason to shove it up my ass that, you know, seems a bit excessive there. Well, WJ, I'm sorry, I've been under a lot of pressure, I'm not getting any views with the channel, I hate the new era, DVDs are just, they're going out of style now, WJ, but remember to use the DVD, you'll know when the time is right. Well, alright, now I know what I'm going to do now. It's time to train! Time to train! To fight! Fucking haters can suck my fuck. 
fucking dick. Yeah, I like to work out wearing pink. Got a problem? Oh, I feel comfortable, I like it. Just mind your own fucking business, alright? Alright, I'm finished with all my training. The only thing that's left to do is to call Melanie for some emotional support before the big fight there. Melanie, how you doing? It's Wrestling Jesus. Uh, Wrestling Jesus? Why you call me? I like Cabal? Uh, I don't know, it's just, you know, it's, you know, the day of the big fight. Maybe you wanted to just, I don't know, say something positive just to cheer me up or something. I, I don't, uh... No, I like Cabal. Kalio. Well, uh, alright. Thanks, I guess. Fucking bitch. Alright, Dark Horse, get out of here right now! Let's do this thing! Here I am, WJ. Dark Horse Danielson here. And I'm gonna put an end to your contradictions and your flip-flops once and for all, WJ. Alright, Dark Horse. Talk is cheap. Bring it on! Now hold on a minute there, WJ. What's up with that beard? How come you got a beard just like I do? Well, there's, you know, a lot of cut scenes and it's just... Just thought it'd be easier if I kept the beard, you know, going back and forth and I just... Oh my god, you're so stupid, WJ. Both have the same beard. <laughs> This movie gonna suck, WJ. This movie's gonna suck. And your subscribers won't like it. Come on, WJ. Come on. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. 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 You ain't man enough to fight me, WJ. Get ready for my fist and fury, WJ. Ugh. Ugh. Fucking rock, he ain't oh. coming back. He's nothing but a PG piece of trash. God, his are whack and his wrestling skills God. are fucking crap. You want it? You got it, you fucking bitch. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What can I do? He's too strong. He's too strong. Just keep it real try. and his fans Gemini here. are fucking you chumps You want the munch on the people's junk They're not good and this is what I say ah. Rocks fans ah. are Yeah, thanks, uh, Jen Yeah, th thanks a lot there Yeah, very helpful, thanks Here you go, Dark Horse, you motherfucker Oh, WJ you hit me right in the mustache, WJ. Now I'm gonna have to have a beard, and no mustache is ever gonna grow again. Fuck you, WJ. Fuck you, WJ. Yes, I've defeated the evil forces of Dark Horse, and now the YWC is safe again. Is that my family coming back for me? My family coming back for me. Come here, you guys. <clears throat> well, hey, I defeated the evil empire of Dark Horse. My family came back to be with me there. Everything's all fine and dandy. Gemini, I'd like to thank you for helping me out, man. Hey, no problem, WJ. Hey, you guys want to sit back and watch a nice DVD of John Cena, daddy? Nah, Gem, sorry. I, uh, I gotta go to sleep and stuff. There, uh, hard day at work tomorrow, you, you know what I mean. Oh! You, uh, you want me to leave, WJ? 
Yeah, I, um, I, I gotta, yeah, just, if, if you could just go. Okay, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll see you later, WJ. Call you or something. Yo, play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, shit. It's a new era, man. One time? <laughs> All you can... Oh, is that up? Me? Yes? About that time now, 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 now. I'll take it to a new level, dog. Oh, they call me Cedric and I'm here to rant. I'm here to pull down my pants. I wave my cock in the air. I wave it like I just don't care. Jump on, give me your boobs, give me your booze, give me your drugs. I'm here to punch some thugs. What up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna fuck your mother. What up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna kick your brother. What up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna fuck your mother. What up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna kick your brother, jump on! I'm here to drop the bomb, jump on! Suck my schlong. Give me your stash, give me your hash, give me your snatch, I'm here to give you cracks. What up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna fuck your mother, what up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna kick your brother, what up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna fuck your mother, what up, what up, my name is Cedric. I wanna kick your brother. I wanna kick your butt right in the fucking face! Oh yeah! I wanna fuck your mother! Oh you didn't know! Fuck your mama! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Fuck yeah, dog! Cedric! You era dog! Where? Fuck yeah, so we're taking over, man! Wrestling Jesus! I'm Roman Reigns! I hear you doing the movie, WJ! Big Sexy Roman wants to be in your movie, WJ. I want to be your movie star. Yeah, WJ, I can twerk. Shake what my mama gave me, WJ. Shake what my family gave me. Pinch my nipples for you, WJ. I can do it all. Well, fuck your movie, then. Fuck this shit, you pussy. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed Wrestling Jesus, the movie. We've now come to the end of the program. Uh, I hope you did enjoy it tonight. If you didn't, that's fucking fine. Fuck you anyway there. <laughs> but uh, seriously there, guys, um, there's just one thing that we forgot, though. What time is it? Oh, that's right. It's humiliation time. God, you gotta get the piss bottle. I, dude, I can't. <laughs> so much time we do embrace tradition and get like an empty water jug to put under my desk, but yeah, <laughs> embrace I can't, tradition. I can't yeah. do that tradition anymore because no. Wait, you did it before? I have done that before. Yeah. <laughs> not in a Bro, water I, jug. I, not in a water jug, but in a bottle. I have before. Yeah. That was tough Larry, because you have to like, you have to aim it just right to get it in the bottle. You have to get the stream. Yeah. But I have done that. I think it was the hill stream. Cause I was so fucking drunk on that show, and I, I didn't want to leave the desk. Yeah, I have done that. No yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Larry, I, Larry, I have. I, I stream from 11 to 4 a.m. every single day. How do you think I do it? Wait, I'm just kidding. I go. I go. Just I go. Up and I'm just for like five I go and I, 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 get, I get shit on. <laughs> I get shit on by my audience all the time because I take a break like every 35 to 40 minutes to go piss. Like, I mean, you can look at You're the like chat here and it says Larry. like, "What are you talking about? What's you got kidney problems or something, dude? What's yeah, your I mean, right here, hour. right here. Look, dude, I've says, had like four drinks on this show and I haven't got up to piss the whole time. I've pissed at 11:08, 11:43, and I just got back. <laughs> Like three that's three times in like an hour and ten minutes. So what is your deal? When I did that on the Hill Stream or whatever show it was, I was completely drunk. It was like five and a half hours, something crazy, you know what I mean? Before I just was like literally about to burst my bladder like the movie Bob. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Bob, but um there's a reference by Bill Murray in that. But anyway. 
No, but hey, what was what, 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 was, sorry? what was it real yeah. quick that I, you were saying um, right. about the movie Bob? No, no, no. Before that, you asked me an opinion about something, but I was having a piss. Well, I would have to repeat the whole story now because you weren't here. Okay, never mind. I missed it. I'm a loser on that. No problem. Talk about piss, Andy. <laughs> There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on So if you want to join me for a while Grab your hat, we'll travel like that's old style Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on